what is WMS? WMS is a standard protocol. Um, it was developed by the OGC in 1999, and it's actually very commonly used in mapping platforms. Um, whatever mapping platform you find, since it's an open standard, um, chances are it'll have good support for WMS. And WMS is a native capability in Connecticut, allowing it to be used with a, a variety of mapping platforms to present geospatial data. Um, all right, so when you're talking about visualizing geospatial data, there's two ways you can do it. You can bring the data onto the client side and, and render it in your application, or you can ask the server, and in this case, that would be the Kinetica uh, server to visualize the data for you and send you back an image. Um, now, there are some pros and cons, so let's, let's uh, review those. Um, so the client side rendering, that's the more common, commonly viewed um, rendering. If you think of your ride sharing apps like Uber, Lyft, you know, you see the, the driver where they're on the road, you see where you are, there's push pin. There's not that much data in that application. Um, so you can easily use client side and bring that data in and render it any way you want. Um, and when you do that, applications uh, tend to be a little more interactive um, because it's easier to, uh, to, to move things that are on the client side instead of asking the server to make the changes. Um, so applications tend to appear a, lo a little more responsive. Um, they're easier to animate. And generally they can look better because there's a lot more styling options. Uh, but of course that depends on the application. Um, so server side, the, the pros there are because everything's happening on the server, the data crunching is happening on the server, there's less load on the client. You don't need to bring all that data in to um, render it. So there's obviously less memory need, needed, less bandwidth needed. Um, if you're frequently looking at the same image, uh, some of those images can be cached, and so you won't be going back to the server constantly. Um, and there's really no data limits. Uh, on the client side, there's, you know, uh, you don't know what you're working with. It could be a cell phone with a, a small amount of memory. So you can't bring in too much data before you start to see performance degradation. But on the server side, you know, you, your Connecticut server is going to be capable of uh, crunching a lot more data. Getting into the, the cons of it. So as I mentioned on the client side, uh, it can be very client resource intensive. Um, if you're rendering a thousand points, first of all, you have to get the data for a thousand points to come through. So, you know, the, the, the network uh, overhead, the, um, the memory usage on the client, that, that's going to reduce performance and you don't know what kind of device you're dealing with generally. So its performance can be unpredictable. Um, and you definitely have a data size limitation. You have to think about how much data you can put in front of the client before your app becomes unusable. Um, on the server side, the cons are it's a little less interactive. Every time you, you want to make any change to the visual style, you, uh, you want to show uh, the movement of an object, you have to go back to the server to get a new image. That makes it a little less uh, interactive and also because there aren't um, the, the data isn't individually on the screen. You can't move it around um, individually. So it, it appears to be a little less interactive and a little less responsive um, and a, a little harder to animate because of that. Um, and limited styling because depending on the server you're working with, since it's rendering the image, uh, you're kind of limited to the stylings available to you from that server. So Raheel, how can you animate WMS if it's just images, as you mentioned. Right, so uh, th that's a good question. On, on the client side, you can kind of move icons around and, and make it look very fluid. On the server side, there are tricks to animating it. If you think of um, you know your weather reports and you see the movement of a storm, um, it, it's a little choppy because each time it's getting a new frame, but what you can do is split your data. If, if there's a, a temporal element to it, you can split it into intervals, make frames and just animate it classically by replacing those and kind of showing the movement of data that way. Uh, so how do you view this data uh, with WMS? Uh, there's a few different ways. Um, 
so the fr easiest way is in Connecticut's uh, G admin. So that's the administrative interface to your Connecticut cluster. Uh, you can go in there, you can do a list of tables and you'll get a little link if you have geospatial data in those tables uh, to view that data on a map and it's going to use WMS capabilities when you do that. Uh, the dashboarding application that comes out of the box with Kinetica is a very powerful, um, offers uh, a map component that takes full advantage of the WMS capabilities that Kinetica has. And I'll show you some of that in the in the demo. It's um, very cool to be able to to explore the WMS capabilities in Reveal. And what you can do is kind of kind of take a look and style uh, your image the way you want it. Uh, once you get the data looking the way you want, you can kind of copy that into your own custom application if you're making it. Um, and of course, if you're making a custom application. Um, you know, you you would be using a mapping platform like Esri or maybe Open Layers or um, Leaflet, uh, Mapbox, and uh, all of those will support WMS. In fact, if you're using Mapbox, we have a uh, code acceleration library called Kickbox.js, which will um, basically reduce, uh, dramatically reduce the amount of code that you have to write in order to integrate Connecticut's WMS with Mapbox. Um, and of course, if you're working on, uh, you know, custom built applications, as I mentioned, you're likely going to be using some kind of mapping platform that supports WMS. Um, so just at a very high level, uh, how does WMS work in Connecticut? Um, it, it's quite simple. Uh, your browser or whatever the client may be will, will submit a WMS request. It's just a standard HTTP request uh, that we'll look at in a little bit. And um, Kinetica will get that request. It'll return an image that visualizes all the geospatial data in the data set that you want to visualize. And your WMS request will have the, uh, it will tell the, the Kinetica cluster what data set to render and how to render it in terms of styling. So all that is part of the WMS request. Kinetica gets it, returns the image. That image is layered on top of a base map um, to kind of make it look like it's, it's part of the map. And then the user will interact with the map by panning or zooming. And every time a change occurs on the map, um, the image will be refreshed. So that WMS request uh, that tells Kinetica how and what to visualize uh, can be seen here. This is an example of a WMS request. You can see it's just a normal HTTP request. You can actually call from your browser. Um, there are some required parameters. There are some optional parameters. And all of these are documented really well um, in the Connecticut WMS documentation. And, and Raheel, with these, uh, with the w, WMS visual styles or, or kind of with the WMS that Connecticut offers, can you filter your data with it as well? Um, so th that's a good question. In WMS requests, uh, normally the, the only filtering that you get is the bounding box. So if you have um, a particular area of the map that you want to visualize, you, you can filter your data that way by uh, making it part of the WMS request. But normally, uh, if you have more complicated filtering, which uh, you're likely going to want to use, you're going to call the filter endpoint of Kinetica or, or make the call to, to filter that data in Kinetica before you submit your WMS request. And so um, you submit a query, you submit a filter, the results of that query or filter get stored as a uh, temporary view. And then in the WMS request, you refer to that view to visualize those results. 